cable management. No, I'm not talking about cord cutting or having to babysit this guy or putting on a suit and tie and going to work for Spectrum. Nope, today we're taking a look at cleaning up that nasty bird's nest of wires, wherever it might be. I'm going to give you some best practices on cleaning up your mobile life and your home life, hopefully with some angles you haven't thought of yet. Let's get into it. If any of these videos have helped you, please consider hitting us with that thumbs up, clicking on that subscribe button and hitting the notification bell so you'll be notified when we upload the latest content or when we run our contests. First things first, let's talk home cable management and there's a lot to talk about. So many different scenarios and situations and solutions. Let's first talk about one of my best practices when it comes to cable management. Wherever possible and wherever it makes sense, I try to go wireless. Less wires means less cables to manage, right? Now, let's start with taking a look at work from home desktop cable management, then we'll head over to the TV and pick it up there. You're probably saying, well, Tashaka, if I go wireless keyboard and mouse, I'll still need the cables to charge those. Well, that depends. Logitech, for example, has many wireless keyboards like the K375S, which I own and have reviewed, and it's amazing. No backlight, but the two AAA batteries that it takes to run it will last you longer than that introductory discount you got for adding a new line with your cell phone carrier. Shots fired! But I've since moved to the Razer Pro-Type, which does have built-in rechargeable batteries made it to my indispensable Logitech MX Master 3 mouse and both require charging. Since they're both USB-C, I use only one cable because the mouse rarely needs charging, so I've yet to have to charge both at the same time. But how do I keep the cable handy and neat so I'm not reaching under the table to find the cable? That gets us into our first physical solution, adhesive cable clips or cord holders. You can find these on Amazon at various price points. These from Ohill have 48,000 reviews with four and a half stars. These are great for keeping cables at the ready on or near the actual top of your desk, your, your actual desktop. And now you're thinking, that's great. But how do I route all of my cables up there without everything looking a mess on the way up to that desktop, Mr. Armstrong? Well, dear viewer, in Philadelphia, J stands for John. But in cable management land, you're actually going to pick up one of these Johns, a J-channel desk cable organizer. You can stick one of these to the leg of a desk, though I wouldn't necessarily do that unless the back of that leg is out of sight. But more importantly, you can stick one under the rear or side edges of your desk, then run the cables out to the top to meet the adhesive cable clips. And if you really want to keep things tidy, you can pick up some wire loom tubing cable sleeves to run all of your power cables from the power strip to the J channel. You know, in some instances, you can even use that loom to just cut out the J channel completely and run all of your cables up to the back of your desk. There are a few different types of that wire loom. I like these which self seal around your cables and these which have a zipper which runs the entire length of the sleeve. And these things, these sleeves kind of work in both worlds, your desktop and your TV. You can use this to run all of your desktop power cables up to the J channel and you can use this to run your power cables from your surge protector to your streaming appliances like your Roku, Chromecast, or Apple TV, even your surround system or soundbar, whatever you have. And while we're talking about running things up from your power supply, choosing one large enough with enough outlets will be a big plus in managing cables. Why? Have you ever known someone who has a couple surge protectors around their desk or TV area, maybe even three? Well, that's three more cords to deal with, and it kind of does make for a mess with everything plugged into the different surge protectors. So instead, figure out how many power cords you may have running behind your TV or at your desk, and then plan for an additional three on reserve. Now, choose an appropriate surge protector. 
I have this Belkin 12 outlet home office surge protector for my desktop workstation where I edit all of these videos. And this 11 outlet APC surge arrest surge protector with USB charge ports for my home entertainment center. Something I'll be picking up, which I've only just discovered, is a surge protector box like this one. It's flame retardant. The reviews on it are generally great, but with a few things plugged up, I wonder what the heat inside will be like. It has fairly large openings on both sides, so I imagine that alone is enough to keep it from overheating. But I think it's definitely worth checking out in your quest to manage your mess. Now, one of the ways I minimize the need to have multiple cables on my home entertainment center is my wireless best practice. I keep a three device wireless charging pad on my TV console so that when my wife and I are sitting in the living room watching TV, we can just place our devices right here. No need to bring chargers in the room with us or take up multiple outlets when I'm using more than one phone. Like I said earlier, less cables needed means less cables to manage less mess. Also, the back of your TV console is a good place for the J channel, out of sight where it won't be seen. And what about running cables from a wall mounted TV down to your entertainment equipment? There are options for that, but you're going to want to check those out for yourself at a Best Buy or do some research online because depending on how you want to paint them to match your walls or if you just want to go with white, there's just numerous endless options with that. So there are definitely some great articles out there on choosing molds or hollow molds so that you can run cable or cable uh, hiders down your wall. So I'm going to leave you with that one because that's a whole video on itself. Though if you'd like me to go down that rabbit hole with you, let me know in the comments below and we'll uh, consider doing that. Moving on to mobile, I think the right bag is the first important step in cable management. Are you the minimalist or are you the heavy gunner? Call of Duty reference. You carry a lot of ordnance. I kind of go between the two. But having the right carry solution with the right amount of organizational space is the first stop on this mobile cable management tour. My everyday bag for the last year and a half or so has been Urban Armor Gear's 24 liter standard issue backpack. The storage and organizational functionality is one of the best for my heavy carry. There are multiple pockets on the sides protected by this water uh, resistant tape seams. So you got all these pockets here, a front pocket for documents, passports, etc. Uh, a top pocket, which I actually have so many things in this pocket in my bag. Not this one. I actually carry the midnight camo all black version. But uh, there are so many pockets here. You can put headphones and all kinds of things, cables. It's pretty deep and it's got a felt lined interior. Uh, and then you've got interior mesh pockets uh, on the side, uh, on the inside of the bag on one side, then organizational pockets on the other side on the inside. So it isn't just a large opening with uh, no organization. There's all kinds of organization inside the bag and you have a laptop compartment here in the back. But what if you wanna go a step further with your organization? That's where an accessory organizer like the Encase Bionic comes into play. This one is on the pricier side and you can definitely find some cheaper on Amazon, but this one is made of reclaimed plastic from the ocean. So it's not only a great organizer, but a product matched to a great cause, recycling waste. It has an external zip pocket right here, one internal zip pocket and two open pockets. And then it has five elastic loops to hold cables, charging bricks, a top loop here for an Apple pencil, and then three mesh pockets to hold whatever else you might put in there. I use it to hold charging bricks. One of the things that's important to me when wrapping my cables is keeping them coiled when in transit. So I have solutions I have used for this. The one I use occasionally is called a bongo tie. I actually use these a lot with my camera gear and cables and, and power solutions. When I'm rigging power cables or AV cables to C stands, I strap these cables down to the stands with bongo ties. For my mobile cable bundling, I actually use these Velcro straps though the most. 
I have a love affair with these and have been using them for years. They just work and it takes years before they stop working, before the Velcro goes down. Literal years before it gets even remotely less sticky. Every few years, I'll buy another bundle of these as the old ones wear out or I just lose them or inadvertently toss out cables with them still attached. But they can be used to wrap multiple device cables together. They can be used for just all kinds of things. I've actually used them in uh, many different applications, even just around the house. So these are really indispensable and they're really inexpensive, a really good combination. So you get a lot of value out of these. So I've walked you through kind of the basics of my cable management schemes and cable management tools and organizational tactics. I hope that's helped you. I hope you've gotten something out of that. If there's any questions you have about anything I've talked about in this video or anything you might be considering, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. Love chatting with you all. I am Tashaka Armstrong for reviews.org. I will catch you on the next video.